Well, hello everyone. I am joined here by Blair White. She is a YouTuber, and I would I, I will allow her to introduce herself. Hi, uh, my name is Blair White. I am a YouTuber who does social and political commentary. My YouTube is youtube.com slash Blair White X with an E at the end of Blair because everyone forgets. Uh, yeah, I stick mostly to feminism, trans issues, race issues, etc. Well, nice to have you on today, Blair. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. I had a good night's sleep because yesterday I went paintballing and uh, that exhausted me. So <laughs> I slept really well. Well, as long as you had a great time. Yeah. So to everyone watching this, there were um, a lot of people who had commented asking me if I watch her videos because we have some similar similar views on things and I decided to reach out to her and now we are we are making a video together and we're going to have a discussion primarily about transgender topics and political correctness and the causes of of transgenderism so to to ease our way into into this topic I would like to know from from you what does what does transgender mean specifically to you, in your opinion? Well, you know, obviously it's a complex topic with a lot of different facets in it that you can talk about. But put simply, if someone were just to ask me that, I would say someone who identifies as the opposite sex and therefore makes uh, medical changes to their bodies to live as that opposite sex. That's basically living and strongly identifying with the opposite sex. I think it's fairly simple when just put like that, but I think that covers it. Yes, I, I, I would certainly agree with that. Um, I had talked about in, in, a, in a separate video that I did, right, regarding uh, transsexual and transgender, kind of a difference between those, those, those two terms, transsexual specifically meaning that. But I think the whole transgender category is anyone who does experience some kind of dysphoria regarding yeah. something that makes them male or female. And, and, and would, you, would you agree with that too? Yeah, I think gender dysphoria is a requirement to be trans. I know mm -hmm. that um, that's not a particularly popular opinion, especially within the trans community, at least not um, based on the reaction that I get from that community. Uh, but, Without dysphoria, I can't imagine what would actually propel someone to undergo transition or to live as the opposite sex. You know, I, I guess I can't wrap my head around why someone would do that, do that if they didn't have that persistent discomfort with their biological sex. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know what your stance is on other genders besides just male and female, especially when people do not experience any kind of dysphoria associated with with their with their sex and their and their gender um so for anyone who is watching this who who may not be familiar with, with your views um would you like to share what your views are on other genders yeah i mean i think that there is an unlimited amount of ways in which you can express your gender and the way you perceive yourself i think gender expression is quite limitless, but um, I can't wrap my head around there being more genders than two. That's been a pretty uh, consistent view of mine on my channel. Uh, you know, <laughs> when you get into the difference between all of these activists and I think sort of how transsexuals actually feel, I think lately there seems to be a huge overlap in the sense that Perhaps maybe there are more genuine transsexuals these days who really do believe that there are more than two genders. But I guess uh, there's a part of me that hopes that uh, it's not the case. <laughs> yeah, and this I think this is something that a lot of people don't don't seem to really think rationally about because I had I had thought about all these different genders before. I even made a video just to kind of educate myself better on what these other genders were, what they meant. And when I was doing it, I was just kind of like, what, really? Are there really, you know, all these different things? And as I was making it, by, by the end of the video, I was just kind of like, you know, just, just 
be you, be whoever, you know, identify as you versus putting a label on, on yourself. And that's essentially what a lot of people do. They put this label on themselves that doesn't necessarily really need, need to be there. And yeah, the way that I, I, I see it here, like, what is, what is your take on like the gender spectrum? Like male and female. I mean, I mean, again, I, I wish people would just replace the word gender with gender expression because, like I said, I wouldn't have any problem with it if a it wasn't completed with transsexualism, which it is, and b they were just talking about gender expression because, of course, you can you know coordinate your clothing or your presentation or the way that you behave to represent how you may feel inside and that may not be so binary you know what i mean that might not be an extremely masculine man or an extremely feminine woman uh but it doesn't make you something else biologically and i know that a lot of the times they're not even arguing that it's a different biological (laughs) sex but it does become an issue when it's conflated with transsexuals because i look at the type of people who you know make the case for all these genders, right? And they do call themselves trans and they do consider themselves to be under that umbrella. When in my mind, I don't really see uh, transsexualism as an umbrella. I think it's a very specific term. I think it describes a very specific type of person, a very rare type of person. And um, I think broadening the definition uh, doesn't necessarily do anything for those people who want there to be more genders and it actually does harm transsexuals in a sense. Would you agree? Yes, I, I would, I would certainly say, cause back when I transitioned, even just several years ago, none of this stuff was even, it wasn't really a, a, a mainstream thing. And now I'm seeing constant videos about it and it's, it's, it's a lot for people to to grasp, first of all, and second of all, it's just it's just too too much. It's just it just makes everything so much more con- confusing and it, it makes it seem like people who actually ex- experience any kind of dysphoria and need to transition like they it's kind of invalid by these other people who identify. Yeah, I mean, it it undermines, I think, what a lot of transsexuals go through. And it's not like a boohoo, you know, I'm trans and it's sad and I go through so much type of thing. But I think there is something to be said about living your entire life, struggling with your sex and, you know, going through procedures which are painful, which are costly, which take a lot out of you and, um, you know, living your life in that space and then seeing yourself conflated with people who for all intents and purposes are just people with like buzz cuts or people who dress a certain way. You know what I mean? Like, it's just very different. That's, that's my main issue is that I have a hard time relating to those people because my life and their life are just so different. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just so different. Like you and I probably live completely different lives. Like I, I've seen your videos and I like your videos, but I don't know much about your personal life. Um, but I can still relate to you in the sense that we're both transsexuals and we both go through, you know, similar things. And we've had a similar journey, at least in the context of that. You know what I mean? Yes. But when I look at these other people, you know, we often call them transgenders. There's just no connection. So then it becomes a problem when these are the people who tend to be the spokespeople for trans people. You know what I mean? Like they tend to be the ones who are hoisted up as the activists who are speaking on behalf of trans people. It's kind of like, I don't know, if you were to have a bunch of Rachel Dolezals running around (laughs) advocating for, you know, African-Americans, it's like, it's like, okay, listen. (laughs) I hear you there. Yeah. Absolutely. That's, that's how I see it. Yeah. And it's because when you are essentially born in the wrong bodies, so to speak, as you said, there there is so much pain and suffering associated with that and going through that. So when you see people who don't experience any dysphoria yet put that trans label on themselves, do you think it could be so so they gain the the rights and um, 
special privilege that that they want trans people to have to kind of speak up for them and just have that have that special treatment and attention well i think it's a combination of things you know what i mean i think that it's hard to say that they're latching on to the trans movement because the trans movement is not exactly the most popular thing. I mean, there's a lot of people who support trans people, but it's also been an uphill battle for trans people for a really long time. I think a lot of trans people are finally seeing the clearing now and things are better now. But um, I think a large part of it is we live in a society that rewards people for being a minority and demonizes the majority. And so you have these these you know non-binary people these genderqueer people, which I guess I don't have as much of an issue with people who classify themselves as genderqueer because to me that just relates to gender expression, which I can concede is def definitely limitless. Uh, Non-binary I have an issue with because they tend to see themselves as uh, third genders, something mm -hmm. in between, you know what I mean? It's different. Yes. Uh, but I think that when you look at these people, they tend to, it's very common to see, they, they tend to come from wealthy families, they tend to live in the suburbs, they tend to be white, they tend to, you know, for all intents and purposes, live very cushy lives, right? Maybe they don't have very many things that they suffer with. Maybe they don't have many things that make them special. And you think of trans people and you think of someone who is the outcast, someone who is on the outside, and, and they latch on to that. I think it makes them feel better about themselves. But it is a problem because they do tend to sort of speak for trans people because I think there are more transgenders than there are transsexuals. And so when they're included in the community, their voice is going to be heard louder. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you said like, like your expression can be essentially limitless. So you have, you can yeah. express yourself male, female, any, any, which way, which way you want. So in regard to a lot of people saying this gender spectrum of male and female, it's more of the spectrum of expression is essentially yeah, what we I, view it as. Because um, yeah. it's a lot of people, it's like if you if you if you have this this scale of male and female, this this spectrum, some people will identify all the way in the male end, all the way in the female end. And then maybe some people will identify a little bit more closer to the center and they'll put a label on that and say, that's, you know, whatever, what, whatever, whatever label that there is. There's so many. There's just too many. Yeah. And then and then people kind of in the middle may be like androgynous with their expression. But that still doesn't change the fact that it's either still male or female. Yes. Yes, that's an excellent point, because when I was a teenager, I definitely presented in an in androgynous manner. Um, I, had, I did a lot of different things with my hair and my outfits, and I would sort of pull, you know, a feminine silhouette in the way I dress, but it's at the same time keeping sort of like a boyish look when I was that age, um, because I, I didn't feel comfortable coming out and telling people that I wanted to be a girl, right? It was just not the move for me at that point in my life. Um, so I was, you know, appearing androgynous, but then change the fact that I was an androgynous male. <laughs> it mm -hmm. didn't mean that I was an androgen. I don't know if that's what's the word for androgynous person. Like yeah. you're still an androgynous male or androgynous female. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's why I would have much less of an issue with that if they just classified it under expression. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, absolutely. And the thing is, um, the, the only way, well, j just as you said, when I've looked into these other genders, a lot of them are essentially just variations of male and female that I find. I, I've never found anything that's completely different from that. It's however the person identifies, it's just variation of male and female. So then the thing is, I mean, I don't, I don't understand what those, what those people experience. I mean, I, I can't sit here and say that. I, 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 I can, I can just say to them, they can just express themselves however they, they want. I'm not gonna. I don't care if, if they identify as male, female, they, them, whatever pronouns they decide to use. The problem that I have is with the whole political correctness aspect of it, where if 
you can't call someone a male or a female. You can't call someone a man or a woman anymore. And when's it going to get to the point when we have to refer to everyone as a they or a them so we're not offending people who identify as non-binary and mm-hmm. whatever else? And I just had this thought while you were saying that. I was thinking, you know, how cool it would be if there was a third sex or something. Like, I don't know. I think <laughs> maybe it's just like the... I don't know. Like, I wouldn't mind if there was a third sex. I'm not sitting here saying there has to be two sexes. I'm just sitting here saying that there just happens to be two sexes. And, um, you know, I guess there's something to be said for just let people live their lives. Because a lot of people look at the way I talk about, you know, these individuals and they say, well, what does it harm you? Like, let them think they are what they are. And I wouldn't mind that, again, but they do get conflated with me. And so then it becomes a problem. Mm-hmm. But then, of course you and I tend to get classified as like the bullies of the trans community or, you know, we're policing people when in reality, it's actually these new people coming in and trying to police transsexuals. So it just spun in the opposite way. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And speaking of, of exactly what you said regarding a third sex, it's, that's exactly how I, how I think the only way another gender could come about if if there are babies that are born without a penis or a vagina, but something else entirely, their chromosomes are not X and Y, but something else entirely. If their hormones are not testosterone and estrogen, if it's something else, then and only then I think can another sex and gender exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, they are, sex and gender are different, but at the same time, they're they're very dependent on one another and they're very similar. They are. I tend to say that, yes, gender and sex are different, but it's kind of the people trying to separate the, them completely are wrong. It's kind of like saying, you know, if sex is the ocean and gender is the waves, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, they're technically different things, but they're so interconnected that you can't separate them. You can't talk about gender in a purely, you know, social way it's not just about social interactions and holding a certain place in society it's also you know your biological inclinations that make you a certain gender you know so if if a lot of these these people are talking about these other genders and kind of making a legitimate transsexual people um kind of applying that that label to, to them, even though, even if they're really not. How do you see the future of the the LGBT community? Huh, it's an interesting question. <laughs> <laughs> I've, you know, I've never really considered myself to be a huge part of the LGBT community. And so I guess from a sen- in a sense, it's hard to see where they're going because I'm not looking at it, you know, from the inside and kind of looking at it from the outside looking in. But I see it just becoming more and more mainstream, but but simultaneously disservicing people quite a bit. I think that the LGBT community, and for good reason, right? They tend to take a an emotional stance toward the topic of transgenderism. But I think that if you're trying to reach out to conservatives or to people who would otherwise maybe not be so accepting, you can't really take that stance. You, people on both sides tend to speak fast, past each other. I think it's important to speak each other's language because you'll have a conservative trying to sit here and talk about the scientific basis of transsexualism to see if it's valid or not. And you'll have the liberal talking to them, just making an emotional case. Well, why does it matter? Just be nice. And you have to speak each other's language. The conservative needs to concede that, yes, you should be nice to people, you know, regardless, but can we talk about the science? And the liberal needs to concede that, yes, we can talk about that and we can determine if transsexuals are real, if it has basis in biology, neurology, and science. Um, you know what I mean? Start speaking each other's language is yes. what I'm trying to say. Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and that kind of ties into the whole political correctness thing. You can't speak about certain things as you'd be offending people. You're yeah, I mean, there is, it's almost like transgenderism is like a political platform. Like there's a list of things like these are what you're supposed to, these are the things you're supposed to say. These are the guidelines. These are the talking points and straying from that is wrong. 
And I think that pretty much my entire channel is straying from that. I know that to a large extent, a lot of the videos that you've done that I've seen over the years do that. Uh, so it's unfortunate that people can't just start speaking each other's language because a lot of the time <laughs> I feel like people are saying the same thing in different ways and no one's hearing each other, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And, and that's, that's, I think is what a, is a very good part of your channel, how you debate people who have the complete opposite view as you, because if you don't talk about these things that you disagree upon, how can, how can there be any knowledge and insight for people to make their own choice as to what they want to believe? Yeah, that's kind of why I've strayed from doing uh, response videos, because for a long time I was doing those, and I, and I still will, you know, I don't think that they're, they're useless, but if I can get someone to come on and just talk to them directly, I prefer that over a response video any day, because I don't think that the talking past each other thing is productive. Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> because this... Again, it's just the whole, the whole, the whole political correctness aspect, and I, 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 I know you, you, you talked about regarding these social justice warriors who don't know how to take take responsibility for for certain things, don't know how to look at some of the facts and get offended far too easily, and. Why do you think that is that some of these people are highly sensitive and do not want to listen to any other opinion outside of their own? Well, I think because, because again, that side tends to make the more emotional arguments. Not that the other side never does that, but I think that it's just more common on that end. And the entire topic of transgenderism is just shrouded in emotion, which is so frustrating. And so anyone who does, like I said, stray away from the talking points, you know, these are the things, I mean, you can see all the trans YouTubers, like, I don't know how many you watch, but they all say the same thing in every fucking video. They yes. all say the same thing. Their channels are always the same, which is why it's like frustrating people come to my channel. And they're like, you're just trying to be different. It's like, what if they're all just trying to be the same? You know what I mean? Like, yeah just being honest and they're all just fucking trying to be the same because I think that that's our form of activism but at the same time doesn't get them anywhere because look at what they've done right this topic is now highly politicized and oh, yeah. now you and now for the first time like trans people have been around forever right but now for the first time in the past few years you're starting to see laws pop up like dictating when people go to the bathrooms. That's the last thing that group would ever want. But they kind of brought it on themselves, politicizing this issue, um, making a bigger deal out of it than it needs to be, removing transgenderism from the medical sphere and mm -hmm. putting it in the political sphere, When which I've always been the biggest proponent of, put it back in the medical sphere. It's the only place it can be talked about properly. And even then there are still issues because there's conflicting studies about the origins of transsexuals and why they are transsexuals in the first place. So stop politicizing it is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's, I think the, the, the main reason why it's so poli politicized is um, there are more and more people coming about and they want some kind of right. They want some kind of movement for, for their own, how they, how they feel. They, they, they want, transgender people to have have the rights that anyone else does and I certainly agree with that but it is it is a rare thing there there aren't many people who are transgender and as we kind of mentioned earlier these transgender individuals it could be that they want these rights that that they don't have because maybe they they don't come from a a background where they needed to struggle to get to, wh to where they are today. Yeah, and they tend to be from the cushy sort of life. I mean, not all of them, but yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Are there many like non-binary gender queers in the hood? <laughs> like, <are> there... <laughs> I know, yeah. Like, and... let's be honest. Are there many fucking uh, 
a genders in Compton, California? I don't think so. They all come from the suburbs of Texas or California. Like mm -hmm. it's, it's all very silly. And so there's always a part of me that feels stupid to even talking about it. But at the same time, like I'm not going to let them politicize who I am either. So mm -hmm. it is worth mentioning, but I don't know, but, but that's the reason why I won't talk about people like, you know, other kid, yeah. people who I did as like horses or dragons yeah. or something. That's, that's just me, a different level entirely. It's a different level. And to me, there will always be fucking insane people who <laughs> do that kind of shit. <laughs> like, okay, you know what? Do your thing, put your cat ears on, go meow at the moon, whatever you're going to do. <laughs> so to me, I just don't care about them, but it, okay. it's these people that have an actual social standing that I do. Right. Say. Okay. And I know that you said that you wanted, you wanted to be put more onto the medical. And that, that was another topic here to discuss, because I know that your, your views of uh, transgenderism being a mental disorder. And, 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 for, and for people who are watching this, why, why exactly do you, do you feel it is, it is a mental disorder? And do you feel as though there are people who are transgender who don't have a mental dis it not being a mental disorder there are other possibilities well i think that well not that i think that it is um proven gender dysphoria is a mental disorder and that is what makes someone trans like i said there's really no other vehicle to take someone from point a to point b of identifying as the opposite sex other than gender dysphoria there just isn't um so people who are trans are afflicted with a mental disorder. Um, it's not a disorder that inhibits your faculties in the sense that like you're like seeing hallucinations or you think something's there that isn't, you know, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. And so in that sense, they shouldn't be treated like they're just absolutely insane people. But nonetheless, it is a disorder and it can be quite disruptive to someone's life. And um, I think that treating the issue with kid gloves doesn't do anyone any any service okay so you primarily think it's a mental you 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 think that the aspect of gender dysphoria is the mental disorder part of it yeah and, and the way i see transgenderism i mean that is the state of having gender dysphoria i mean if you look yeah. at the definition of transgenderism and of gender dysphoria they're just like they're the exact same minus like one or two words. It's the state of strongly and persistently identifying as the opposite sex. And, and so for me, again, we get to the whole, you can't separate sex and gender. Technically they're different, but they're inseparable. Really they're interconnected to the extreme. Same thing with transgenderism and gender dysphoria. I've never seen any studies or evidence that you can completely get rid of gender dysphoria post transition. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can certainly alleviate it if you're lucky enough to transition in a way that you can enter spaces and be perceived as a gender that you want. But I've never seen anything showing that you completely get rid of it. Cause there are people that go through, I mean, I'm sure you know this, there are people who go through every surgery you can get and they just like completely live their life as the opposite sex and they still have dysphoria. Because oh, yeah. it's just something we're born with. It's something that's just part of us. Yeah, so, that yeah. was something that someone commented on a, a video that I recently posted saying, what if transitioning is not enough? It's, and I was just thinking, you know, some of these, some of these people online, these are YouTubers who transition. It's so exciting. They document it. And then, mm -hmm. and then, and then they have surgery and it's like so exciting. They document it. And it's the, they seem to be more interested in the thrill of getting these these new female things mm -hmm. than they are actually having it because because once that's done and over with there has to be something else if it's nothing else they got to do this, something else and it's just it's debilitating absolutely and that's what concerns me about the sort of pop transgenderism what i call it um this whole thing on youtube where you have all these young trans people i don't mean kids but you know 19 20 21 22 and they're going off and getting all their surgeries and they're documenting it and they're getting a lot of attention and they become this trans person on social media and it's all very fluffy and light and they feel like a princess and it's amazing. Um, but it's like, you have your entire life to live after transition. And when you make that everything, it's kind of like, oh my God, you know, there's only so many, many times you can go under the knife and come out and feel that 
instant gratification of, oh my God, this has changed and I look great, you know? Yeah. So people, people need to, you know, think about the rest of their lives. That's why, I mean, I don't know how you feel about this. I, I don't know if I've seen any videos on you talking about this, but this whole concept of, you know, young people and teenagers transitioning and, you know, 13 year olds going on hormones, like to me, <laughs> it's hard to even see the light at the end of the tunnel when you're in your early twenties transitioning. Like I did, like, it's so hard to perceive my life when I'm 40. The idea of a young kid who oh, is yeah. going, going through that pop trannyism, you know, that euphoria of like getting stuff done. It's like, God, they're going to hit a brick wall and they're going to realize they have their entire life to live now. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was another topic that I, 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 I I, I, I wanted to um, briefly mention um, later um, after um, after kind of this this section here that, that we're on. Um, so so we will get back to that in just a minute about the youth the transitioning. Um, but getting getting back to it being a, a mental disorder, I, I know you said you would want there to be another option besides just transitioning. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious to know what other option would you want like would you want some kind of medication to to have you done or some kind of therapy or what exactly do you think could be another way to alleviate this besides transitioning you know i don't know <laughs> and that's the part that i do get hiccuped on because it's like i'm not a professional i'm not you know i don't know how to treat it however what i do know is that transgenderism transitioning i'm sorry that transitioning is incredibly faulty and that doesn't work for everyone. It just doesn't. If, I mean, I'm sorry, but there is no point in going off and getting these gender confirmation surgeries. If it sounds horrible, but if you, if you can never enter any spaces and just go to the grocery store and just go do what you're doing and live your life, if you're not ever going to be perceived as a sex that you want, those surgeries don't matter because those surgeries are to alleviate dysphoria. And the only chance of doing that is if you become content with the way you look. And so for me, it's hard for me to shit on transitioning because I am very happy with what I've done and, and what I want to do. And it's brought me a lot of happiness and has alleviated a lot of my dysphoria. But I also am aware that there are people who could never transition and, 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 and do it in the way that would make them happy. Oh, yeah, so, I, I, I definitely hear you there. And I definitely, my, myself, I've experienced so many wonderful things after transitioning. I, I became so much more confident and was able to actually look in the mirror at myself and not see someone that was foreign to me, to actually be able to, to, to love love myself. So it, it is definitely very, very rewarding. Mm -hmm. But I completely hear you there about it being faulty because people aren't going to, as, as, as we said a little bit ago, there's always going to be something else we need to change. Yeah, and there's some things you can't change. And that's why transitioning is just not the move for some people. And people think that I'm mean when I say that or I'm being stuck up. And it's really not. It's out of concern for those people because I get people every day emailing me, Snapchatting me, you know, asking me, do I have a chance of transitioning and, and, and being, you know, who I want to be? And, I'm, and and I look at them and I'm kind of, I don't know what to say because if I'm looking at a six five man with you know what I mean like it's just like you probably can't but I, I don't say that because it's very harsh but that's why when I look at those people I'm like god I wish there was something else that would help them mm -hmm. with what they're feeling because I can relate to them gender dysphoria is hell gender dysphoria is it can be quite debilitating um I don't know how hard it's been for you but it's there's a certain point in my life where it was just like oh my god I can barely get up and like just live my life because of this yeah I've 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 definitely been been there, absolutely. Yeah, and so I, I look at them and I say, I wish there was something else because I can't in good conscience tell them, yes, go get a boo job. Yes, go get this done and you'll be happy because it's just not true. It's just not true. Yeah. So regarding it, it being a men mental illness and everything, I've always kind of thought of it like... I know that 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 you say gen gen gender dysphoria is the mental disorder aspect, and I certainly agree with that. Um, however, do you think the whole the whole that could be triggered by 
um, like trauma and abuse from the past. Interesting. You're asking if someone could experience dysphoria based on perhaps being abused as a child? Or? Yes, and essentially how that would work. And this is something that I feel as though for me personally, as well as other people that I know who have have had very traumatic pasts. Like I, I know plenty of trans people who have very traumatic pasts and it's almost yeah. like a dissociation. It's your, for, for, uh, for me, it was my male self was abused and neglected and it was like, I would always think, even at that young age, I was like, I want to be a female so I don't have to deal with this abuse. I want to be someone else. So I'm not this person. So do you do you think that trauma and abuse from the past could make someone like that transgender? Oh, wow. You know, I can't personally say that I can relate to that. I, I never experienced any type of, at least, you know, that I can remember or anything consciously that would be abusive or cause me to have some sort of trauma that would make me identify as the opposite sex. But um, I think it's possible for sure. I mean, I read a story about a, a man who was stripped away from his father after his father had drug issues or whatever and got, got placed in custody with his mother. And his mother was very abusive and very sick and sadistic and she dressed him up as a girl to humiliate him and she treated him really horribly and would call him by female names to hurt him mm. because he didn't like that as any other little boy would not like. And so he would do something bad and his punishment would be go put on a dress. Wow. And um, I read an interview with him and he talked about how throughout his life um, he would never consider transitioning but that he had this, you know, very strong, strange dysphoria he experienced based on that. And so I think that it's possible. I don't think it's um, the case for everyone because, oh, yeah. like, I, I can't remember anything that would personally trigger that in me. However, um, I think it's interesting and it's something that people don't talk about a lot. Uh, it could be. Absolutely. Yeah, I guess that's that's something because I have my own personal experience with that. I always think if I had not been through those past experiences, would I still be transgender that that's that's the question that I ask and to me at this point it doesn't matter if I would or not but it's something that made me think okay maybe there's something more to this than just you're just born with you're born in the wrong body so to speak yeah. um, and I really appreciate how candid you are with that because I think that there's we keep talking about the talking points of transgenderism right the talking point of born in the wrong body and have a female soul and and all this stuff and and you know what that all sounds good when you're trying to make an emotional plea or whatever but i think that getting down to the nitty-gritty of it and really dissecting it is is very interesting and it's very taboo for some reason don't oh, you yeah. agree oh yeah, yeah. absolutely it, it's just like me me probably saying that it it just it will offend a lot of people it's like there's no way it could be but there's yeah. really no way of, of knowing if it's caused by that or not because there's no kind of study that shows that. But there are certainly a lot of trans people that I know who have had very traumatic past, but then there are also plenty who have not. So that kind of makes it say, well, then it's not connected. But I think that there could be for some people. Another really interesting thing that I sometimes think about is that almost all the trans people I have, I have met in my life, I mean... I actually would say all of them, maybe not, maybe one or two don't fit this, but almost all of them, they tend to, outside of having gender dysphoria and that conflict within yourself of feeling the, feeling like you're the opposite sex, um, they also struggle from other disorders. Oh, yeah. Yep. A lot of them tend to have very strong social anxiety or depression or, you know, just just things that they're they're struggling with, mm -hmm. and so I also wonder how gender dysphoria is accompanied by those things, and if they are interconnected at all, or if it just so happens. I don't think it is, or if it just so happens that all these trans people I know also struggle with different things. Some of them are autistic, or you know, it's just an interesting conversation. And unfortunately, a lot of these conversations are not going to have studies to back them up because these things are very taboo, and and people sort of, I feel like we've come to a dead halt 
in this conversation where it's just, you know, people are trans, they transition, end of story, accept them, love them. This is what it is. Yeah. And I agree with the accept and love them part. I mean, let's all, let's do that. But uh, there's so much more to talk about and there's so much more to study. And it, it's sad that it's kind of come to a halt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because this is, it was, there were, I think that there are so many causes that can, that can cause this. And, 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 we, and we touched on the topic of, of the mental illness aspect. And I certainly agree there with there being comorbid diagnosis of other disorders within the person. I mean, it's, I think the whole having gender dysphoria it comes with a lot of de- depression and anxiety. So you may be diagnosed with that first. If you go, if you go and see a, a psychologist, you may be diagnosed with a bunch of other things too. Yeah. But that's really not the root of the problem if it is gender dysphoria. So another another cause that some people would some people have said to me, and I, <laughs> this one I, I I do just kind of laugh at. What what is your take on? It being like all, all these religious people who say you are possessed by demons and you are committing <laughs> acts against God. You know, what is your take on that? Oh, shit. I, it's funny you would ask. I, I kind of like forget about those people. I think they're so rare these days. Um, I don't know. I don't know. How, like, how do you tell someone like, no, I'm not possessed by a demon. I feel like anyone who believes that you're possessed by a demon it's not going to be convinced by you trying to tell them I'm not possessed by a demon. Uh, I don't know. I just kind of brush those people off. There's always going to be, you know, hardline fundamental religious people who, who, who view it that way. But I guess they're just not common enough for me to care about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's, I, I hear that a lot um, for you? various reasons. Yeah. And, Pretty much what I say. I, I said it the other day to someone, and they said that you are controlled by Satan or something. And I said, controlled by Satan? I am Satan. Respect me, or I'll drag drag you to hell. <laughs> That's what I said essentially. So it's like, <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> so yeah, I, I I don't know how much validity validity there is in that, but I just wanted to kind of briefly t- touch on that cause that a lot yeah. of people mention. Um, yeah. Another cause that I hear a lot has to do with the differences in brains. Like when a male or female is born, certain parts of the brain are different than that of what they biologically are. Right. So That's another interesting point. I know that the white matter in trans- transsexual women um, is close, if not completely resembles that of biological women. And I know that that's cited as a transsexual brain am i correct in that yeah 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 ab- absolutely and and i i kind of looked looked into this i and i looked at some things that were for it and against it and there definitely seems to be even if it's not like a fully feminized or masculinized brain inside of a male or female body mm-hmm. there's definitely something that is different there so, so there, it's, it's kind of like almost like a, a birth defect where something happens in the womb, but, but before your, your body and brain develop, and it just mm. switches. Yeah, I think that's what people kind of miss when they hear um, female brain and male body. Um, it's not technically true. It's more of a feminized brain and a male body, right? Mm-hmm. It's more of a, a little more to this side brain in a male body. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's actually makes for a really interesting person. If I feel like transsexuals who can work through the dysphoria and live their life and are productive are some of the most interesting, most intelligent people because they tend to have certain male and female aspects to their personality and to the way that they look at the world and to their intellect that is very fascinating. And so I really enjoy those people. That's why I tend to relate to and enjoy the company of older transsexuals quite a bit because not only have they lived the life longer than me and they just, they know the one two step of it all, but also that they've kind of worked past the initial trauma of being trans and they're kind of like, this is what it is now. And they have this dichotomy within themselves that you, it's very hard to describe and articulate verbally right now. But um, do you kind of know what I'm talking about? Like they have that 
dichotomy within themselves. Yeah, it, it's almost like how I how I like to think of it is a transgender person who transitions. It's they are kind of in touch with their female and male aspects of themselves, which many people don't are really not. have that. So mm-hmm. I think that is a big advantage there. Yeah, I think it also makes it interesting. This is a whole different topic, but it also <laughs> makes it interesting for dating because for me, men that I've dated, um, in a very strange way, because I'm a very feminine person and in a lot of ways, a lot of the behaviors of men I cannot relate to because I'm just not part of it. But when it comes to like, um, there's just certain things you can relate on. Oh, yeah. trans women with men, especially when it comes to... Um, like the way that you were raised and as a child, because I never experienced the world through the lens of a man, but I did as a boy because I transitioned when I was a very young adult. Uh, And so there's this very strange thing that you can relate on. And that's another thing that's kind of hard to articulate verbally, but I think you know what I'm talking about. Yes, I do. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like you, you, you get along better sometimes with a male because you have some common ground growing up as a, a male. So you kind of understand that to a degree. You just, it's impossible for, for you and I to experience life growing up as a female. So we can't relate to females in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. That's why when I look at my friend group, actually my friend group is mostly men. I mean, all of my guy friends just treat me like any other girl and it's just like a normal thing. But at the same time, whenever I'm around other you know, women my age, I feel like sometimes I can't relate to them in, in this strange way. Uh, but I mean, certain aspects I can. Yeah. But being socialized as a certain gender affects you for the rest of your life, even if you transition, as oh, I yeah. guess what I'm going to say. I was still socialized as a boy my entire life. I didn't have one of those families who, you know, I wanted to play with the Barbie, so they put me in a dress and I was on puberty blockers by 11 and I was just doing my thing. It was not that at all. It was very much like, no, you're a boy. This is how you need to act. We're putting you in football classes. We're putting you classes, football classes. <laughs> <laughs> so despite living your life how you want to live, you the way you were socialized as a child is going to affect you forever. Those are the most formative years of your life. And so... In a sense, with men I date now, they see me completely as a woman and I see them completely as a man, but there's just a certain thing you can relate on. It's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I definitely hear you, hear you there. It's, I, I, feel, I, feel, I feel the same way. Like I have a, a diverse friendship of, of, of men and women and there are some, a lot of the times there's women I, I can't grasp as easily as I can. A, a, a male I just understand them easier than I do a female it's still kind of foreign to me so yeah yeah um so now kind of getting getting back to some of the causes of it of these these this brain difference of it being you know female brain male brain whatever um do you think a cause of that could be due to a hormone imbalance like like in in the womb like if if a baby is exposed to too much estrogen or testosterone, do you think that could essentially change their their brain before their their body develops or or vice versa? Well, I think to a certain extent it has to be at least partly mm-hmm. prenatal. Um, because some of my earliest memories are that of gender dysphoria. Some of my earliest experiences as a child were of me feeling uncomfortable being expected to conform to boyhood. And so can't really think of any other explanation as to why that would be other than some shit was wrong in the womb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then if, if that's not say that that really, like there wasn't really much of that going on in the womb and the baby was born and, and they started developing and then maybe something else is pro- is a problem and they have some kind of hormone imbalance. Like let's say a man, their testosterone is not where it should be for a male their age going through puberty or even probably older actually. And then 
they're maybe maybe their estrogen is a little bit too high and they feel as though they are transgender but it's not it's not the same like do you think there's any validity in some kind of hormone imbalance after they've already like an adult perhaps it could be um but i know in my experience and a lot of my trans friends experiences because before you go on hormone therapy you have your levels tested out you know like yeah. they want to know you're before you start to where you're going and um i didn't have any imbalance i didn't have any uh you know increased levels of estrogen so on that end i would say it has to be neurological then if it's not mm -hmm. hormonal okay um it could be for some people, you know, I'm, I think there's no, there's no one that just like the thing with you're saying about the trauma could be a reason. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think there's any one reason why someone could feel trans. I think there could be multiple reasons. I don't think any one reason is perhaps more valid than the other. I think uh, basically what I think is there's not enough information about there on this damn topic. Oh, yeah. And now something else that really did interest me regarding a, a potential cause, and, and this does go back to when the baby's in the womb. How do, you, how do you think environmental factors can come into play regarding this hormone imbalance, such as like toxins in the air, food and water, perhaps the uh, mother consuming products that imitate estrogen? that may directly and <laughs> chemically alter the baby before they're even developed. What, what are your thoughts on that? Do you have any knowledge on that? Um, I actually don't have much knowledge on that. I know that that's been kind of a long running theory for homosexuality. Mm -hmm. um, but again, I'm really not ruling anything out. I think that, because again, I say that transgenderism is defined by having gender dysphoria, but I do think that gender dysphoria is kind of the byproduct as well, in a sense of being transgender, in the sense that your brain chemistry or an imbalance or whatever it may be could be the reason why you're trans. And then the fact that you're trans gives you that dysphoria. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense. Yes, it does. So however you get to the point of being trans, I feel like is up in the air mm -hmm. and I wish there was more information. Absolutely. Yeah. I guess like regarding all those environmental factors, it's something that I did recently search and I, I found, and it was, it was this one chemical named atrazine, which is used is it is an herbicide essentially. And it has been shown to actually cause uh, gender con confusion and it, it makes, I think the study was done on, on frogs and it essentially makes the male frogs into female frogs and they produce eggs. And I found this very disturbing because what could that be doing to a baby that hasn't developed yet? Oh, wow. <laughs> very That's very interesting. I have to look into that. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. And it was just like, well, yeah, it, it, it was just, it was just, it was very impressive and, and, and alarming, absolutely, to, to think that that, and, and it is certainly in the, the um, water here in the United States, but other countries may not have it, but there are still people in other countries who are transgender and homosexual and stuff like that. So, again, it could be a cause, but it might not be a cause. And that kind of relates to, do you think that there is a rise in the number of transsexual people. Yeah, there is a rise. Uh, well, well, it's difficult, right? I mean, there's a lot of information showing that the amount of gender clinic referrals is skyrocketing right now. Oh yeah. Um, so that's a thing for children specifically. Mm -hmm. so that's a thing. But then you get down to it and does that mean the number of transsexuals is rising? Or does that mean the number of people who view themselves as trans based on this whole pop transgenderism yes. movement currently? Um, it's difficult to say because, you know, trans people have never been included on the census. So we've never had an accurate population count, right? Like no one knows truly how many people 
are transgender and are living in this world. What we do know is that gender nonconformity and people who consider themselves trans has been have been around for forever, right? Like this this whole concept of transgenderism as transitioning and surgeries and hormones is new just because modern science is new, <laughs> but you know, people have been doing things to change their gender since the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the increase is concerning as someone who, you know, is involved in these conversations about yeah. pop transgenderism. Absolutely. And that was another cause that I kind of thought about as well. Like going on to this topic now of young children, do you think then, because of all the exposure out on the internet, out in the media, do you think that a child who is, you know, under the age of 10, maybe even like five or six years old, going on the internet, watching videos from LGBT people, transgender people transitioning, and they become exposed to that, but they have, their parents do not teach them anything about that at all. Do you think that could contribute in any way? Yeah, I mean, there's this whole, like, glamorizing of it. Like, there's this, you know, there's, there's a ton of trans people on YouTube who they make their channels completely about glamour and being trans and transitioning and, yep. you know, living life. And I can name names. Gigi Gorgeous is one of them. I mean, I like Gigi. I think her channel is about escapism. And I think there's a place for that in this world. And I'm not shit talking at all because <laughs> I do enjoy her. Sometimes she's a little... <laughs> a little airheaded sometimes but you know that's her life like she's rich and she doesn't have to think about too much and that's fine uh but i do worry about because even on my channel you know i don't think i glamorize being trans i think that perhaps if someone just looked at my instagram which you know instagram is like the spotlight moments of your life like looking cute and doing glamorous things yeah perhaps they could get the same thing but even my channel i get people messaging me saying like um I wish I could transition and be just like you. And like, it, it's, it's very bizarre. And to me, I tell them like, honey, if you're not trans, you don't want to transition. Oh yeah. It's not glamorous. It's not easy. It's hard. It's expensive. It's time consuming. It's painful. Like just so much. Right. Oh yeah. Um, yeah I, I want to wish this on any, anyone. No one. No one. And, and I say that, and I think that perhaps even you say that again, I don't know your personal life, but it seems to have really worked out for you. So we're saying this from the perspective of someone who it's like worked out for and we're fine now. And we're still saying that it's horrible. So <laughs> imagine the people who are sitting here and it's not working out for them. Like that's horrible. Um, so I do worry about it being glamorized and on YouTube, I think it is glamorized quite a bit. Yeah, absolutely. And regarding just the whole children transitioning, the whole trans youth, it's, your what you believe in um, that that children should not be chemically transitioning, I am in total agreement with that because how can how can a child know at six or seven years old, maybe even I've even heard four years old transitioning, and I do not understand where that comes to be, how that how that comes out to be something that is a thing yeah you know this is we both hold a very unpopular opinion within the trans community <laughs> on that it's very unpopular and um you know obviously surgery is not on the table i think a lot of people have the misconception that when we talk about transitioning as children no one's talking about surgery really i'm sure there are a few loonies who would fucking do it or have their kids do it but uh, surgery is not legal for children to undergo as far as transitioning. Mm -hmm. Thank God. But hormones are legal. And I think that it's, it's very sad. I think that transitioning is something that we both agree is painful, time consuming, costly, debilitating, horrible. And the idea that a kid in their formative years goes through that and goes through permanently altering their body at a young age when they don't have the capacity to consent to that, by the way. Yeah. And sterilizing themselves because most of the time you are completely sterile, especially if you do at that age, like you'll never have kids. And, and I'm sorry, but I'm of the opinion that, you know, 
13 year olds don't have the capacity to decide if they want a family someday. It's just not like who wants kids when you're 13, who's going to put that into their mind and think about that. You right. Know? And um, even me, I transitioned at, at 20 and I didn't want kids at 20. And now do you agree with this by the way? I, since being on estrogen, I had this weird maternal instinct now that I'd never had. And like, <laughs> It's just like this very new thing. And now I want kids. And I'm just like, well, can't happen. <laughs> no, I cannot agree with that. <laughs> no, I cannot. I cannot. Um, I, I do not have those same experiences. No, I've always been not wanting kids. And I so do not want kids. But I can I, I can understand it being like, I want the best for kids. I think I would be a good mother. I think I could be very strict. I would, I would put all the proper rules into place. But I... I do not want the responsibility at, at least at this time in my life. So. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, just the idea of someone half our age making that decision, honey. Oh yeah. No, Absolutely. it's not how And, and the activists tend to put it like, it's very disgusting how they do this in my opinion, how they, they sort of set up this dichotomy where they kill themselves or they transition. Like, are you going to make yep. kids kill themselves? It's like, that is so sick. And mm -hmm. that is so horrible to put on people and parents. Like, that to me is despicable. I hate that. Oh, yeah. Because it's essentially, it's trying to convince you that if you don't let them transition, they are going to, to kill themselves. So that's essentially shaming you into like, okay, okay, I will agree to it. And it's, as you said before, that very emotional aspect coming out yeah and i hate the, the appeal to emotions with this topic it's like there is enough validity and reason to believe that someone could be biologically fueled to be trans without adding all this emotional stuff like you don't have to make an emotional appeal for transgenderism start citing you know sources about the brain and start citing you know different things like you don't have to start like scream and cry and set up this dichotomy where people are killing themselves or transitioning, like it's just not real, you know? Mm -hmm. So then if if a child, like he, he was the whole thing that kind of disturbed me. I think a lot of people in the LGBT community, especially the especially transsexuals who have transitioned, I think a lot of, a lot of them are for trans, uh, trans kids, kind of getting the proper yeah. hormone treatment and everything. And I think, that could stem from a place within themselves that they wish that they had a, a childhood that was in alignment with the sex that they identify as. Absolutely. Yeah. That is 100% my experience with these people. Um, you get in these arguments and then the truth comes out that they are trans and that they wanted to transition earlier. And it's yep. like, oh my God. And even that to me is disgusting because listen, I'm glad on a technical level that I didn't transition at that age because like it would have been a lot, like it would have been incredibly stressful. I don't know where my life would be right now if I had done it earlier. But of course, like you think about how things could be different as far as your appearance if you did it earlier, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. But to put that and then say that that's a reason why we should open the floodgates and let kids transition because they'll look more like the biological sex they want to be it's like are we really prioritizing appearance uh -huh. over people's lives like that to me is sadistic that's crazy yeah yeah it's just it's way too much for the kid and you know i don't know how many people are going like how many kids who transition and then they're like they they end up reverting back they end up regretting it because there are even people who are trans who go through the whole process who go through the surgeries and then they don't get the outcome that they want and then they end up regretting it uh-huh and yeah i know from my own experience with with that even like with the surgery that i had i do i do not regret it but there are aspects of it that i that i wish i perhaps held off on for a little bit that i wish that i was a bit more patient that I wish we're better now, but I can be content with that. But there are certainly things that are just not right. And that was a decision that I made when I was fully an adult. So I can't imagine putting that on a kid. Absolutely. And it's, and it's very much a taboo 
to speak about people who perhaps regret transitioning or perhaps uh, wish they hadn't or that do actually try to detransition. Mm-hmm. It's, it's very much a taboo. And to an extent, I understand why people don't want to talk about it because it's often used as an excuse or a reason to um, tell trans people that they shouldn't transition, mm-hmm. which is, which is, which is not cool at the same time because people are going to do their thing what people do what they want. But, um, it is an important conversation to be had because if an adult can transition when they are fully of age, know the consequences, et cetera, they decide that they want to go back. Oh yeah. Which, which it sounds like a nightmare. Like, some people just go all the way post-op mm-hmm. and everything. And then they're just like, want to detransition. I'm like, Oh my God, that sounds like a just yeah. horrible <laughs> dream to me. Um, but if an adult can do that and go back, then a child sure as hell can, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I don't, I don't appreciate being expected to suspend my knowledge of how the real world works and how kids work to to have these arguments. I'm not going to pretend as though a 13 year old knows who they are at 13. Like I'm just not going to. Oh yeah. You know what? Because I mean? we we all go through phases, especially yeah. around, around that time. So I'm not saying that being transgender is a phase for everyone. Absolutely not. But it's for for some people who had been that young and they've been exposed to that and they're transitioning. It it, it may is. not be the right decision and. In fact, going through the puberty that they were meant to have could, it, it could be very de- detrimental, but it could, in fact, make them think, mm-hmm. oh, well, there goes that face. Yeah, it could help their dysphoria because for me, my dysphoria heightened after puberty because that's when you start developing as a boy. It, it wasn't terrible before puberty because before puberty, you're in a sense and a little bit of an, you know, an androgynous person, like you're, everyone's the same kind of, yeah. under, you know what I mean? Um, but that's why it's so crazy putting kids on puberty blockers because they could realize they're developing in a way that they want when they're going through puberty. And uh, it's frustrating and it's frustrating, especially that it's basically a consensus at this point among the trans community that kids should transition. Yeah. And to me, there's just such a larger conversation to be had about it. And Mm -hmm. yeah, what I always say is look at the causes for it. Like what is causing this, this rise in these transgender individuals? Because if it in fact is some of the, the, the causes that we mentioned earlier, especially kind of being exposed to transgender topics online and watching the videos and everything, then that is a clear sign that they're, it's not really transgender that is the problem. It's that the kid was just exposed to these things and they're, they've they learned these things that they shouldn't learn at that age and shouldn't be thinking about at that age. Yes, this actually brings me, um, I remember an interaction with I had, I had with someone online about two years ago. I was part of this message board a couple of years ago and um, it was the beginning of my transition and I would post pictures, my progress. It wasn't a trans forum. It was like a gaming forum, but I still did it on that website for some reason. And um, this young boy, he was 16. That's not a young boy, but a teenager uh, messaged me after seeing my pictures, my transition progress. And he told me, you've made me want to transition. And I think that you look amazing. And I think that, I could totally do it as well. And, you know, you make it look easy, et cetera. And at the time I wasn't involved as involved in these conversations as I am now. Mm -hmm. And so if I had heard from that now, I I would be like, honey, stop. Like you're not trans. You're just being infatuated with my pictures or whatever. Oh yeah. Um, But he actually went on hormones. This kid went on hormones, went to a doctor, got on hormones, was on hormones for about four months, five months. And um, we stopped talking after that, but I talked to him about a year ago. I had him added on one of the games I play. And he was like, hey, remember me? I was like, yeah, I remember you. Um, How's your transition? And he's like, oh, I stopped. It wasn't for me. (laughs) And I was like, wow, what a gag. Like, 
people do go back and it's it's taboo but people, we need to talk about it oh like, yeah <laughs> you can't open the floodgates for people another thing i live in california and um i didn't need to go to a therapist before i got on hormones and wow. i find it a little bit troubling <laughs> oh yeah uh, I opted to go to therapy beforehand and I was already seeing a therapist, but when I went to the endocrinologist, there was no prerequisite that I had to go to therapy to decide if I'm actually trans. Wow. And to me, that was just too far liberal with the shit. Like, oh yeah. Like you cannot just give people hormones because they come in and they say they want to transition. Like I came in to that endocrinologist and he's an amazing endocrinologist. Okay. Um, he's an expert. He, he knows what he's talking about. He knows a lot about hormones, which is great. But I went in and all I said was, hi, I am, I want to transition and I need hormones. He said, and he said, are you male to female? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, we'll get you a prescription. Like it was a longer appointment than that. We talked about the side effects and everything, but it was very much too easy in my eyes. Oh yeah. I mean. Yeah. That, that is I had another friend who who kind of said this similar thing to that, and it was like, really, they don't they don't want to they don't want to have any kind of therapy session with you. They don't want to learn about you. They don't want to learn learn about what you've been through. They don't want to learn about any of that. And it's, I think it's just the whole medical uh, physician scam that it's. I can just go right into my doctor and say I have like which I already ha I have done, but. I didn't go go through with any of that. It's like I can go to my doctor and say I'm I, I have chronic pain all over. I, I I need this medication. Like okay, they won't test anything. They'll just take my word for it. Essentially, they won't bother to do any kind of test or none of that. And I find that to be very concerning because the whole medical industry it's it's very much a big scam. And especially what you're saying now about the the hormones that is I didn't know that that was that is very disturbing. Yeah. Yeah, my family was really surprised at how quick it was. I, I went in with no prescription and I left 30 minutes later with a prescription for espironolactone, estradiol, and progesterone. And I was just like, wow, I thought maybe like over the course of a few appointments or who's going to ask me about dysphoria or ask me about like, no. And I remember I had another appointment like I think like a year and a half ago or something. And I was asking him, um, about why it was so quick. And he was like, well, you just looked the part. Like you walked in and you were presenting as female. So it kind of just made sense. And I was like, well, I guess, but I don't know. It's, it's concerning to me. I don't know if it would have been the same for him if someone who was presenting completely as male <laughs> went in asking for hormones. But, but to me, there shouldn't be a different treatment anyways between those two people, someone presenting as female and someone not like, I don't know. Yeah. It's just, granted, it's just way too, too quick. Yeah. Granted, I was not upset about it at first. Like I was surprised by it, but at first I was like, yes, I finally got it. Cause oh, yeah. you know, when you're in that space, you're like, I want it now, 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 like I want mm -hmm. it now. Um, but looking back, it's kind of like I don't want to speak ill of him. Cause he's a, he's a good doctor otherwise. And I, and I do like him, but it almost seems kind of like malpractice to me, but yeah, maybe that's just, you know, yeah, that that is just way way too fast. And something else that had shocked me when I had I've had conversations with with people, and there was one person who was under the age of eighteen, and they were telling me that they had already had sex reassignment surgery. And I was like, how could you get it under eighteen? I thought you needed to be eighteen in, in order to get it. And I found that to be very very disturbing for me that you that it happened so so quickly. And this was someone who had transitioned probably when they were probably prior, prior to puberty. And it was like, that. that is very, very fast. That's just way too fast. Yeah, there needs to be more conversation about the fact that transitioning in a lot of ways, like certain aspects of it are, are reversible, right? But so many aspects of it are not. And even hormonally, it's, it's very bad for you to go on and off of hormones or to do it for a while and then decide not to. Like, if you're going to make the change, you need to make the change. You can't be messing with your levels like that and going from one extreme to the other mm -hmm. more than once. Like, it's actually very fascinating how um, the male body can completely switch over to female level hormones and be healthy and thrive on that. Oh, yeah. However, 
Yeah, it's very fascinating. How yeah, it's something just... that I thought about. It's like, is it healthy to be having this in a male body? <laughs> and it's like, there's no real problems. I'm, I'm yeah. concerned about like the actual taking the medication, the side effects of the medication, not no, so much. Yeah. The, yeah. Me too. I don't like the idea of, of being on pills. I never have. I've, as long as I've lived, these are, this is really the only medication I've ever taken. I've Any problem I've ever had being depressed as a teen, I've never went in and got medication. Like I don't like taking medication. That's the same but, with uh, me too. Yeah. 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 So that's why I prefer injections over pills because injections go straight to your, you know, but anyways, um, yeah, there needs to be more conversation. And, and also another thing that I wish was stressed more was the sterilization aspect because I think we like brushed over it in my first deployment with my Indo that like I would need to save my sperm if I wanted kids, but it wasn't like a, listen, this will sterilize you. You need to decide now, go save your sperm or take this prescription right now. You know what I mean? Yeah, It wasn't so, as serious as it should have been. And it, and it should be because maybe it's just the traditionalist inside of me coming out when I say that like family is important and, and some people don't want to have kids, but some people do and some people don't realize until later that they do and a lot of people it's their whole life having a kid and and and, and you know spreading or continuing their their bloodline like it's very depressing but on my dad's side the bloodline ends with me um i can't have kids and the only other person that has a chance of doing it is my uncle but my uncle is gay and so he's not gonna have kids mm. so it's depressing and people need to know that that like Say goodbye to having kids, especially if you're male to female. I know that there are some female to male people who get pregnant, which is a whole other topic. But. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> so there was there was one more question regarding um, trans youth, and that is, would you be more receptive to um, younger people transitioning if it could be proven, if there is indeed a a brain difference if they did some kind of brain scan and it did indeed indicate that okay this is female brain inside of a male body if there was some kind of um proof would you would you be more open to the idea of children conditioning yeah if there was some kind of yeah proof <sighs> no no uh because I mean, I guess it would make me a little more comfortable with the idea, but I mean, there are trans people who recognize that they're trans, recognize that they have dysphoria and still decide that they don't want to transition for whatever reason, right? You know, okay. whether, whether it be money or they don't want to change their body or they want to have kids or, you know, anything. So I don't think it would sway me that we could observe the brain and 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 no i don't think so okay okay yeah i was, I was just kind of curious about that because if i think i don't think i would be all for it but i think it would make me a bit more comfortable knowing that there yeah. is some kind of pre-existing condition but i still i really haven't thought about it much i really don't know how i would feel about that but mm -hmm. um yeah, it's yeah, I'd be a little more comfortable, but not entirely. <laughs> yeah, it it's it's such a as you said, it's a taboo topic to talk about. It's <laughs> but it's good to have the conversation. So yeah, it's good that we're talking sure. about it. <laughs> yeah. uh, um so there was that there was there was someone who uh, commented regarding um us discussing SRS because even though a lot of our ideas are similar. I have had sex reassignment surgery, you have not. So um, I got it because I felt as though that was like the only male part of my body left essentially. And I just didn't like it. I needed to have what I felt I should have been, been born as. So I'm curious to know as to why you are not, um, um, you're not receptive to, to getting the surgery. Okay. Uh I have a very complicated relationship with the idea of SRS. And thank you for asking that, by the way, because I don't know, people don't ask me that very often. Uh, it's a unique question. <laughs> uh, but uh, when I think of my body and the dysphoria that I've always experienced, I experienced dysphoria more over other parts of my body, some of which have been alleviated through dysphoria, through, through transition, which is quite fabulous for me. And I'm a lot happier because of it. Um, 
I guess my relationship with my genitals sounds weird. (laughs) I'm not like incredibly uncomfortable with it, but at the same time, I'm not like comfortable with it. Like I would never necessarily utilize it during sex and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, However, my dysphoria has always related to my interactions with people on a person to person basis, you know, leaving the house and how I'm perceived and what I look like in the mirror when I'm looking at myself and how I view myself. And for me, for whatever reason, um, my genitals have never really fit into that because you go out into the world and people perceive you based on secondary sex characteristics, not based on primary, right? They don't look at you like, you could just as easily between us, we could go out somewhere and you could say that you have the penis and I have the vagina and people would never know because people don't see that part of you. So that's where my dysphoria has always been. However, to say, I guess I have zero dysphoria over it isn't true. Uh, Like I don't particularly like if it were to be visible to someone or to talk about it necessarily with people. Um, Not that you're making me uncomfortable asking about it. I feel like this is a productive conversation. Um, And then there's the aspect of, I guess there's like a fear attached to getting SRS, you know, like it's an extreme surgery and and it's very costly and it's, and there's a lot of downtime associated with it. And um, I mean, you can speak to that more than I can. I just know what I read and what I watch on YouTube and stuff, but um, there's a lot to it and, and it's a big decision. And, and perhaps later in life I would, shift toward wanting SRS, but right now I guess I'm just focusing on aspects of my transition related to my secondary sex characteristics because I feel that those are more important right now and more connected to my dysphoria right now. Okay. Yeah, that, that's that's certainly reasonable because um, there, are, there are plenty of people that I know who won't get SRS for this or that reasons. Like some people, just as you said, they're not they don't have as much dysphoria over it as other people who opt for the surgery, like me, for example. Then there are other people who they don't want to get it because it's too risky of a surgery. Because it is, <laughs> you are risking a lot by doing it. I mean, there are there are really good surgeons out there who can do it. But if if I had known all of some of the problems that I would have afterwards, if you know, just all the dilation, all the the care. The the question is, well, would I would I do that again? And I I think I would do that again, absolutely. But it's I wasn't anticipating just all the care that needed to be done. And even right. now, just I think a lot of people can be intimidated by by the dilation, because for me, I'm still doing that three times a week. And I, it's like, it's because I have problems still. And it's like, uh, it's just too much. It's just too overwhelming for me. So mm-hmm. some of the people, they talk about it and I've watched their videos. And they and it's like after a year, it's like, oh, I don't even like hardly dilate at all now. And it's like, why couldn't I have been like that? <laughs> you know, just kind of wishing that. But mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's, 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 one, of, that's one of the reasons. And, and people... Um, I think sometimes judge that someone is not really a transsexual if they don't want SRS or if they haven't gotten it. Um, And I guess you can feel how you want to feel, but at the end of the day, that's, I mean, it's not a requirement, you know, like transsexuals are just defined as having a strong and persistent identification with the opposite sex. And, And yes, that does entail primary sex characteristics for a lot of people, but for a lot of people, I would actually say most people, because most transsexuals do not get the operation, their dysphoria is more attached to their secondary sex characteristics and how people perceive them based on how they look. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely, as you said earlier, the whole transition, it's not for everyone. Same with SRS. It's not for everyone. So, yeah, for sure. sure. (laughs) So, um, I guess the final thing that I would say to you, but but before I ask some of the um, questions here in the chat, would be um, to anyone who 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 may be watching this who is who is trans, what kind of words of advice would you would you give to them regarding their transition and their dysphoria and dealing with that? Um, 
I would say don't compare yourself to other people or to other people's transitions because everyone is different. Um, everyone's outcome is different. Everyone's journey is different. Everyone's surgeon is different. <laughs> um, just it's not healthy to compare yourself. That's kind of for anyone, but for trans people, especially in this context, like just not healthy. And I'd also say depend on yourself and only yourself. Um, the life of a transsexual is often kind of a lonely one. <laughs> it's often a very independent one. If you're prosperous, transsexuals are independent. Um, a lot of people face, you know, ostracization from their families. And that's very sad. I can relate to that on a certain level. I had one particular family member who disowned me after coming out as trans, which I don't really talk about because it's kind of painful. Um, I'm but for the most part, me. for the most part, everything is good though. But for those people who are facing that, work on yourself, strive for what you want. Don't make transition the end all be all of your life because your life has to continue after you're done, and you will crash really hard if you transition and then you realize you had no goals outside of that. Work hard if you have to work harder than everyone else around you. Do that. Don't accept this toxic victim mentality that's often placed upon trans people by the trans community and by the LGBT community and by liberals. Don't do that. Um, and just learn to love yourself because it can be hard. It can be hard. And I'm not trying to be depressing because my life is great, but the journey to get to this point hasn't been great is my, the point I'm trying to make. Yes. Okay. I think, I think that was a wonderful, um, Wonderful advice for people who, who feel as though they may maybe trans and, and want to start out. I think it was very sensible and reasonable. So I think that's great. So um, before we head off here, I think we should answer a few questions from, from the chat. So if you would like okay. to post any questions here in, in the chat, we can certainly uh, answer a few before we uh, get off here. So ask away. Let's just take a look. Okay. Someone wants to know. Oh, that's kind of lewd. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's say we had to we had to wait for the delay to to kind of pick up for people to people to start asking. Okay, will this live stream be a permanent? No, we were we were going to end it very soon here. <laughs> I think they mean will it like stay up? I think oh maybe, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I think maybe some people think this is on my channel because I linked it, but this is on Autumn's channel. Okay. Because my live streams are always unlisted, so I think someone's asking for that reason. Oh, okay. Okay, so. All right, let's take a look here. Okay, so so there are two genders, but expression is a spectrum. And yes, that was something that we that we discussed earlier, how um, we 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 think that you can have two or two genders here, but how you express those those genders can be uh, you know, so, so many ways of being able to, to express them. Yeah. Okay. Let's take a look. Okay. And if, and if you will see some here, some of them, some of them. Okay. All right. Someone says who proposed the chat and why? Who proposed the chat? Yeah, like whose idea was it? It was it was Autumn's idea, but I was very flattered that she asked me because I have seen Autumn's channel over the years and I'm a fan. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I reached out to her because there were quite a few people leaving comments on my videos saying asking her if, if I if I watch watch her videos or because we have similar views on on various things. So that was why I reached out to her, and I honestly didn't expect her to reply because I thought she would have gotten so many emails and everything, but she did, and and, and here we are, and I, I thank you for coming on. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It was, it's been really nice. I think that we touched on a lot of things that um, are different, and, you know, I, I talk a lot about transgenderism because all the interviews I do are usually about this topic, but I think we discussed different things, and the questions posed were different. And yes. I, I enjoyed Yes, I, I certainly try to make make them different from just a, a typical 
debate that just kind of grazes the surface. I wanted to kind of get into, into some, some details here. Um, so so here, is, here is one for, for you, which is interesting. It says, why are you so mean in your videos? You seem very friendly here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, think that you're mean in your videos. You just, you just, you don't care about being politically correct. You just speak your mind. I think to be fair, I can be mean sometimes. Uh, I would not deny that sometimes I'm mean in my videos, but um, I guess to an extent, I like to do it for comedic purposes. And okay. I guess that's maybe a cop out a bit, but you know, I can be, but at the same time, um, I think that a lot of the time people judge based on like five minute videos, which is fair. That's what's being put out there of me. Right. But oh, yeah. I know that, you know, as a YouTuber that you're so much more than like the five minute clips people see of you. Like there's just so much more. So I don't think I'm a mean person. I think I can just sometimes be um, a bit harsh in the way I say things. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That, that That's, that's, that's understandable, but it's, I don't know. You have a very specific message, and however you you get it across, sometimes it can be, you know, too harsh or or, or whatever. But it's you have your own views, and you can ultimately you can express them however you you like. I'm not, no one, no one, I'm, no one should be trying to tell you how other otherwise. But um, here's another question: Here has feminism taken over the trans agenda and use it for their own ends? Um, I don't really know about the trans agenda. That's kind of a weird phrasing, but I will say that um, feminism has seemed to co-opted transgenderism for sure and made it, um, I think feminists in large part um, are responsible for the politicization yeah. of transgenderism. And I always find it interesting just how many transgender people, transgender women there are that are feminists as well. Oh yeah, they practically all are. <laughs> yeah, and I always, it's, to, to, to me, I've always been against the feminism. It just, it just seems like a, a brainwash cult to me is what it seems like. So I've never been for it, but the thing is, um, I wouldn't want to be a feminist because I don't feel as though I could offer much because I am a trans woman. I'm not a biological woman. So I don't feel as though I have the right to say, you know, speak up for women's rights. Even even though I identify as a woman, I present myself as a woman. I am legally a woman, you know, with all the documentation and everything. But it's it's different because I was bo born, a, born a male. I just, I just disconnect. Interesting. You know, I actually feel that to a certain extent as well. I mean, I talk about feminism quite a lot because... Mm -hmm. I'm critical of the movement. However, um, there are certain topics that I feel uncomfortable talking about because I don't want to speak for people. Like um, everyone has their opinion on the abortion issue, right? Which I have my opinion as well, but there is that little part of me when I'm talking about it that's like, well, shit, <laughs> you know, like th this is not a part of my life. I can never get pregnant. Therefore, I'll never be faced with that decision. So I guess I get weary of speaking for people who actually go through that. Yeah. Um, okay. So. Yeah. All right, and we we have a super chat here. Um, how far left, right would you describe yourselves? I'll let you go. Okay, um, I would describe myself as center right, and I've taken a, that political compass quiz, which uh, has told me as well that I'm center right. I think that I hold. People may think that it's contradictory, but um, despite the fact that I'm trans, I do hold certain traditional views of gender and of family um, and of kind of the structure of America looking through the lens of family. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I think I'm center right. That was just one example, but I think I'm center right. Okay. I really don't know where I would classify myself, to be honest. It's, I feel as though I, I've always identified, like I, I, I take aspects that I like from, from one end and the other end. It's, things that I like over here, things that I like over here, and it's, I make my own mind about them. However, I did take that, uh, that, that quiz, that, that political compass quiz, and apparently I am over to the left more, <laughs> apparently, according to how I filled it out, but <laughs> I don't know. 
Um, all right, let's see. We will answer. Let's, let's do two more uh, questions here. Let's take a look. Um, okay. There's a lot. There's a lot of things here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, well, here is okay. We will we will end it. Okay, we will end it on on this one here. Okay. Because this is this is a this is a funny one. Do transgender shave butt? I don't know about you, but I yeah, I, sh I shave it. <laughs> I mean, I don't have to, but I'm sure people do. I'm sure people do. Yeah, no, I don't. I don't. I don't need to shave it. <laughs> okay, okay. So he, okay, here's actually a good a, a good one to end it on. Okay, because I've I've actually talked about this. I'm not sure if you're if you're familiar with this at all. But what is your Myers Briggs personality type? I am an, an I am an INFJ. Do you know what your yours is? Have you taken that test at all? No. No, I haven't. No. I haven't. Okay. Well, I'll have to. Yeah. Yeah, we have to. It's it's certainly it's pretty interesting. It's a personality test. It, it tells you if you're introverted, extroverted, and a whole bunch of other things. So it, it can kind of describe, describe yourself a little more. So uh, I thank you all for for coming to the stream, and I thank you, Belair, for chatting with me today and talking about about these topics here it was very enlightening to get get your perspective and to be able to share some of these ideas that we have similar to one another so thank you very yeah. much everyone yeah thank you so much for having me like like i said i've seen your channel for so many years and um i was happy when you reached out i recognized you instantly when i saw your picture in the emails i was like oh my god that's that's awesome. I have, to, I have to say yes to that. So thank you for having me. Well, thank you. Okay. So I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to end the stream. And then I want to say a, a, a few um, things t to you after we stop the stream. So okay. um, goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>